Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Safa, and today we are continuing to investigate various backtesting procedures for value at risk. Again, focusing on the simplest value at risk model there is, that is parametric normal VR or variance covariance VR. And today we're investigating a slightly more complicated backtesting tool to the standard coverage test we investigated in the previous video. However, this particular procedure is way more well known and applied way more often in practice and research. And this technique has been developed by Kupiec in 1995, and that involves, again, evaluating the uh, number of violations of your VR threshold uh, compared to the expected probability, expected frequency of violations. But unlike in the student coverage test, where you just use the proportion difference Z test, uh, Kupiec has developed a chi-squared statistic based on the expected proportion of VR violations and observed proportion of VR violations. And looking at this formula, you can already see a lot of familiar concepts here. For example, you can see the uh, typical uh, likelihood ratio expression, two times natural logarithm. And in parentheses, you can see something that is very reminiscent of the binomial distribution. All of these concepts we have previously covered on this channel. So have a look after you watch this video to refresh those in your mind. However, today we are concerned with the Kupiec's unconditional coverage test based on the uh, likelihood ratio concept and the chi-square distribution. And as usual, we first have to consider our sample, which is five years worth of uh, BlackRock daily returns. Again, nothing fancy here. Our sample size, we can just count the returns, resulting in 257. We have to choose uh, the uh, confidence interval or the alpha for our value at risk to start with. And again, let's start with something quite lenient, like 10%. And let's explicitly calculate one minus alpha to simplify our future uh, formula quite a bit. Then we can estimate our average daily return using product one plus all the daily returns there are, to the power of one over the sample size, minus one, resulting in an average return of 0 0.05. Daily volatility is just a sample standard deviation applied to the same uh, area of returns. And our variance covariance VR is, as usual, our average return plus standard normal inverse distribution applied to the alpha times our volatility. Again, resulting in a variance covariance VR of minus 2.45%. Now we have to apply the indicator function, which Kupiec has uh, quite intuitively notated here, which is equal to 1 if our VR is violated and 0 otherwise, which means if our return on a particular day is less than the VR, lock in row here, then the indicator function is equal to 1, there is a violation, and 0 otherwise. We apply it throughout, and we can count or sum how many violations there are. So 89, 89 ones in this particular column. And that means that there are sample size minus violations, non-violations. That is, days when the VR was not violated. Those can be used to calculate our proportions. So number of violations over the sample size, sample size locked here, is 7.08%. And the proportion of non-violations is 92.92%. .92%. our uh, violations proportion 7.08% is alpha bar, which is the empirical proportion of violations. Whereas our alpha is the theoretical proportion of violations if our VR is applicable, which is 10%. Likewise, one minus alpha bar is the empirical proportion of non-violations, 92.92%. Whereas one minus alpha is the theoretical proportion of non-violations, which is 90%. And then we just need to raise those expressions to the power of either the number of violations that occurred or the number of non-violations here, 
t is sample size, t minus number of violations, we have already got it here. So the only thing left remaining is to calculate our chi-squared statistic. And here we can actually deduce from the mathematical representation of the Coupiet's uh, chi-squared statistic that it does indeed inflate the value of the statistic when the deviation of the violation proportion from the uh, theoretical confidence interval is large. So basically, we have got a higher value of the chi-squared statistic uh, if our alpha is either substantially higher or substantially lower than what we expect. Here we have got 7% uh, probability of a violation, which is, well, substantially lower than 10%, so we would expect a significant chi-squared statistic. So inputting the formula, two times the natural logarithm of our empirical probability of non-violation over the theoretical probability of non-violation. That needs to be raised to the power of the frequency of non-violations, which is 1168, times the ratio between the empirical proportion of violations over the theoretical probability of violations. So 7% over 10%. And then we raise it to the power of the number of violations. Then we close the brackets, and that results in a chi-squared statistic of 13.12. So, and for significance testing, we can plug it into a white-tailed chi-squared distribution with one degrees of freedom. As there is only one parameter that can vary here, namely the confidence interval. And that results in a p-value of 0.03%, meaning that the 10% uh, Variance covariance, VAR, is inapplicable, is unreliable, given our backtesting procedure. And just as in the previous video, we can see how well it captures violations at other uh, confidence intervals. So if we go to 1%, we can see that we have got the reverse picture. Uh, our empirical pr proportion of violations is now higher than the theoretical, again, uh, heavy-tailed thin peak distributions, so that's what you expect for those, and the uh, chi-squared statistic uh, picked it up uh, no matter what. So it does pick up violations in both directions, either uh, exaggerating or uh, underestimating your exposures at various quantiles. And if your alpha is 5%, then, just as the previous test, it shows that your uh, measure is reasonably accurate, p-value is insignificant. And that's all there is for the application of the Kupiat's unconditional coverage test for VR backtesting. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider support on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.